what's up guys it's zed and this is episode 22 of the fifa 22 creative club career mode with zilla fc and it's not just episode 22 it's the freaking 500 subscriber special year i just want to thank you guys so much for all the love and support that you're giving me and even though i can't exactly post every day right now like before because of school i'm still trying my best to upload as much as i can so once again i'm gonna just thank you all for getting me to 500 subs next up is 1000 subs so if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed make sure to take that one second just one second and click the subscribe button please come on i know you want it so i mean i mean it's free so just do it and the bell as well so you can get notifications for future videos and let's get straight into the video before we go into anything i just want to show you guys the kids so I have no idea why it's Torvaldson that is rocking it. I think it's because he's the captain. So, I mean, he's not going to be wearing the goalkeeper kit because that one is really shit, though. So, for the home kit, we have this. Uh, it's, it's the same navy blue color, but this time the shorts are gray, just like in the very first season. And then, wait, wait the shorts gray in the very first season. I can't remember. But, yeah. And then it has those tiny gray stripes on the arms and then on the shoulder so that's basically it for the first kit then for the second kit we are back with the all pink or rather all yeah it's pink it's kind of like hot pink so it has the uh zigzag with a darker shade of pink and yeah everything is pink really and then the uh those tiny subtle stripes on the kits like the like on the shoulders on the socks on the on the what's it called on the shorts they like the navy blue from the home kits. Then on our fourth season, we are upgrading our stadium. It's now bigger and better. It has those. Uh, it has a nice roof. <laughs> I don't know what to call that kind of roof, but it's a it's a nice roof. All right. So last season, Torvaldsen was his contract expired, and I have no idea why it's still showing this. Maybe like after I move on from the first date, he's going to leave the club, and then I will have to uh, buy him back. Or rather sign him back hopefully that's what happens because i really do not want another team to get this guy because if they do that's going to be so sad he's joining wolves when the trans shit i'm just i'm just seeing that he's joining wolves when the freaking transfer window opens so it means that i'm going to have to spend the cash i have on a on another keeper fuck i mean i have mendy i have mendy but mendy is rather old he's like how old he's 32 so i could I can use him for like this season, I guess, before I move on to getting another keeper. Hopefully, hopefully I can do that. All right, so before we do anything really, we're just going to sim past the uh, home, the preseason. And we we actually won all of the matches for the first time. All right, nothing really happened. So I'm just going to uh, jump to the 20th. I think that is, I think we should be done with this by then. And yeah, we actually lost. 4-0 to Atletico Madrid. That is the worst defeat we've had in the longest times. All right, so Barnes' offer was withdrawn. Edwards' transfer offer. There really isn't anything to do in this place. Oh, yeah, I actually agreed for this loan, but I guess it's expired now. All right, there's an offer for Graven Birch, and it's a really, really huge one. 222 million pounds. That is a lot of money, but <laughs> Graven Birch is 90 rated. And there is no way I'm selling this guy out of this team, to be honest. Like, there's zero, ch there's zero way that I'm going to do that. So, if I were to actually look at this lineup and study it for weaknesses, I would say that I would need a substitute striker. I would need a substitute midfielder because, I mean, we have Kamavinga and Faulkner. So, I think a, a substitute uh, keeper... A substitute keeper and a substitute defender will be what I'm looking for because Kamavinga and Faulkner are, are okay to uh, hold the midfield in case Foden, Gravenberch or Devo get injured or something like that. And for the striking position, we have just Hutton Odoi out there and then Edwards isn't really all that. So I guess, I guess the most important thing to go for right now will be uh, the striking a substitute striker and a substitute defender all right so a good option for a substitute striker would be alexander isaac he's from bayern i actually saw him in the previous in the previous episode where we faced bayern in the finals i think it was the finals 
yeah, it was the finals, and he actually played really well. So I think I I would want to get him, but he's going to be really expensive because. I mean, I'm looking at Jude Bellingham as well because he happens to be a really, really, really good player and he's just 21, meaning that he's going to be another kind of beast. And I could actually get Rich James and put Bakari as a centre-back because he can play the centre-back position too because he's actually tall enough and he's big enough to actually cover that position. So there's a possibility I might go for Rich James and Alexander Isak. Hopefully I can actually do that. And maybe I might go for Bellingham sometime in the future, maybe next season. And, 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 and if I can get him this season, then, then that wouldn't really be a problem. I probably would just go for that. So we're going to be starting off with Alexander Isaac. And we're going to be delegating, obviously. His, his, transfer, his, transfer, his transfer value was 79. So we're going to start at 80. Because, I mean why not and then we're not going to go higher than i really cannot go higher than 120 for this guy so let's just do 80 to 120 and then for what's his face reese james okay his value is 71 his value is 71 so okay okay so he's now that i think about it i have upamecano up there down there rather so I don't really think it's a good idea to buy Reese James and uh, and stick him in and stick him on the bench because it's only if Pamikano gets injured that I can move Bakari into the centre back position and then get Reese James on the right. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to buy. So I'm just going to go for a midfielder. There's Weston McKenney and then there is Hussein Awar, and lastly there is Jude Bellingham. Oh, there's also Renato Sanchez. So he's 63. Jude Bellingham has to be. Weston McKinney is the cheapest from what I gather. And he's 25. Okay, I think Jude Bellingham would be a better option, to be honest. So I'm just going to go for Jude Bellingham. His transfer offer, offer is 58. So I'm going to start at 55. You know. And then this shouldn't really go over 90, I guess. So that should be good for the transfers for this season and let's see how they actually go. Alright, so the offer for Drew Bellingham broke down because apparently they said it was too low. So we won't be able to go for him anytime soon. But I'm going to go for Weston McKinney next from Juventus and let's see. Let's see what they would say really. Alright, so I'm going to start at 50. And then I'm going to not go higher than 65. It shouldn't go really high, but I'm just doing that because of like a fail safe or something like that. All right, so they agreed for 54 million and I'm just going to accept that and then go straight into the wages and oh, this should be good. So, so we have one more midfielder because I mean, we're planning against me center back, but we already know that it was a bad idea because I didn't want like unless I get a defender that is not all that, then that would, that would make it okay because I really do not want to buy Reese James and then start putting me on the bench because he's already an 86 rating and that is that is something so i i don't i don't really want to do that okay no release clause and then for his wages okay he's definitely not going to want one dollar I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop this down to 100 instead of 110 and then give him a signing bonus of 600,000. so that should be okay we still have 150 in the bank 150 million pounds in the bank all right, so the negotiations with Alexander Isak have hit a roadblock as well, so we won't really be able to get him anytime soon. All right, so Ferran Torres is still an option for substitute striker and winger, but I'm just going to stick with Alexander Isak for a straight-up striker because Greenwood also plays on the right, and then I might even play him on the left because he has played on the left in this series before. So, so I'm just going to wait for the... So I'm just going to wait till I'm able to resume negotiations with Alexander Isak with Bayern. And before I do that, there's this match against Manchester City, which I'm going to sim. It's the FA Cup. We already won one of these and we win again. Uh, who scored? Zaid, obviously. Greenwood as well. And Kamavinga scores to win the match for us. All right. So big news is that there's a there's a offer for Bakari from Atletico Madrid. And this guy is actually too good to, to sell. The reason why I sold, uh, um, what's that guy's name? 
De Vergara for um what's his name? For Alfonso Davies was because he was already like twenty eight by the time I sold him and I I just didn't really want an like that kind of an old player, even though he was really good, but I just felt like Davies would have been a better option for me because he was faster and then, you know, more skillful. Like maybe not more skillful though, but you get the gist. Anyways, I'm not going to be accepting his offer because God forbid. Alright, I'm just realizing that uh Luka Jovic is twenty six and he's actually he could actually be a really good option for us instead of getting someone with so much money like um, Alexander Isak, who is just two years younger than Jovic. So I think I'm just going to go for Jovic instead. So he's going to be like a substitute for Greenwood in case of, you know, anything or if I just want to like rotate the squad and play him. So I think he will be a better player. So I'm supposed to get between 56 to 74. So I can I just leave it at that to just make this round figure, you know, because OCD and all. All right, next up is this match against... And let's go Madrid for the uh, Super Cup. And I'm not going to be playing that either. So, hopefully we can win it. Hopefully we can win it. And we do not. Yeah, we, we do not. We lose the Super Cup. That is one less trophy in our trophy cabinet. I actually have to uh, uh, sit down and actually, like, think of all the trophies we have won. All right, the offer for Jovic. Or is he Jovic? I think it's Luka Jovic, though. But I, I'm not going to call it Jovic. Sorry if I am mispronouncing it, but... Jovic is what I think of anytime I see it. So, anyway, his offer has been accepted, and I am just going to negotiate real quick. And I think that will be all for our negotiations for this season, unless I want to get a keeper, which I really doubt that I'm I'm going to get. Okay, so it's going to get a rotation, obviously, because Greenwood is far better than him. And then let's give it four years. That should be okay. No release clause, obviously. And then his wages, he was getting 135 before, so I'm going to give him exactly that. Let's just take it up to 140 and no bonus. Let's see what they would say. And he's happy with that. So we're good. We have Luka Jovic and we have Weston McKinney. Those are the two main transfers for this season. And I don't think I'm going to be getting any other players. All right, so this is what the team looks like. The only issue right now is a substitute keeper and a substitute defender. I mean, Odoaro is still there. Uh, he's... <laughs> I doubt he's going to be getting any playtime this season, to be honest. But, I mean, he was he was the first defender, he was the first person that ever signed to this club. So, he's still going to be in the club. He's most likely going to retire in this club. And I, will actually, I actually would like to see him do that. Alright, so the first match of the season is the match against Liverpool. And this is going to be the first one I'm going to be playing out of a lot. I'm going to be playing in this episode because I'm going for the whole season. And this will just be the first one of the season because I guess it just has to be the toughest and the most important so we're just going to do this hopefully we can clinch another win against Liverpool because I don't think they've ever beaten us I think once I'm not, I'm not sure really but let's hope we can come out with the win all eyes on Trent Alexander-Arnold the big news is he's been deemed fit enough to start and we're live next on EA TV Hello everyone, you know some footballers enjoy a rainy day, not sure fans always feel that way, but an exciting match in prospect nonetheless. My name is Derek Ray, and sitting alongside me in the commentary box, providing expert analysis, is Stuart Robson. And there are few more enjoyable days on the football calendar than opening day in the Premier League. It's the Blades taking on Liverpool. Well, the atmosphere is incredible inside the stadium, Derek. There's a real sense of optimism amongst the fans about the new season and what it might bring. It's been a long wait, but hopefully we get a great game to kick their campaigns off. And a look at the starting 11 for Blades. And this is how Liverpool start the game. 
Alisson gets the nod in goal. Trent Alexander-Arnold plays with Andrew Robertson in the wide defensive areas. Mohamed Salah plays with Sadio Mane out wide. And leading the attack today is Roberto Firmino. And the match begins. Devoe. Oh, incredible save, and he snuffed out any sign of danger. Trying to deliver it accurately. And that is not going to help the cause. The header well off from it. This is the man so many people have been focusing on ahead of this particular game. A matter of whether he was going to be able to play or not. And with that in mind, we all looked at the team sheet with a good deal of interest today, Stuart. And denied by the keeper. Impressive. Over it comes. And a good take under duress there. Using his physical strength to make sure he doesn't lose the ball. And this could pose problems for the defenders. And he's in. And there it is. The opening goal. The ideal way to start. Well, here it is again. And it's all about the pace on the counter-attack. They were so quick to break out from their defensive positions. And there's certainly no doubt about the finish. He really hits it with power and accuracy. Nothing the keeper can do about that. It's with Fabinho. And Mohamed Salah now. Will he play it in? Fabinho. Oh, he's given it away. Can they square the game? It's gone in beyond the goalkeeper. And Liverpool are level. Well, he wasn't going to waste this chance. 1v1 against the keeper, and he slots it away with great confidence. That's a good finish. Mohamed Salah now. The high press was on, and the chance is on. There it is, and he could scarcely have had an easier finish. Well, just look at the defending here. They've made it so easy for him in the end. That's just not good enough. Two minutes of stoppage time coming up. Good vision. Can he get onto this? Great chance to make it a brace, but the keeper had his say. Alfonso Davies. Ryan Grafenberg. Zaid breaking at pace. Oh, in with a chance! And a goal, the equaliser. Superb entertainment. Well, here's the goal again, and it's a really nice ball to put it through. The vision to set up the chance is outstanding, and there's certainly no doubt about the finish. He really hits it with power. Ben Yedder, Marino, and a goal it is to put them in front again, no less than they deserve. Well, we won't get tired of watching this because the interplay around the box is wonderful. And then the finish. Ten minutes left for play. Well, visionary passing. He's managed to get in behind. What late excitement. And the match is a level. Well, here it is again. And how many times have we seen in recent games teams trying to play out from the back, not doing it particularly well, giving away sloppy possession, and then finding well, no, they've got to make this count. We will have three minutes of additional time at the end here. He's managed to lose his marker. This is why we adore this game. Late drama, and now they're in front.
Well, here we can see it again. Look at the way he glides past the defender to create space for himself. But you do have to... Oh, goalkeeping to and that is the end of the game. It goes into the history books as a home defeat. All right, so I don't even know... I don't even know what the hell happened in this match, to be honest. Because, like, when we scored that goal, I thought that we were just going to hold it and at least get a chance on goal. But Lukajovic, Lukajovic was the one that got the goal, the last equalising goal, and he's the one that fucked up our last counter-attack. I mean... All you have to do is get that ball to Zaid and, you know, it will have been 4-3 to us. But we, lo we lose our first match in our, in our new stadium and that is, that is really fucked up. Alright, so next up is the match against Fulham. I'm going to be using my second team. It's, it's, it's almost as good as the first team, to be honest. Just that we don't have those big, big names right here. So let's just quick sim this match. And we do win it. Suho Davis, Suho and okay, Suho got a hat trick. All right, so there's a transfer offer for Suho from FC Barcelona, and he's our captain. He's our captain, so I'm not going to be I'm not going to be selling him anytime soon. I'm I don't think I'm going to be selling him ever because I, I don't have like I don't have like some newfound love for Suho ever ever since last season, and it's justified really. The last match for this month is against Manchester United, and I'm going to be playing basically one 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 game per month i think yeah one game per, one game per month or there are some months that i really wouldn't even play any games at all just because i want to like go through the season as fast as possible so the first match in this month i i think i would want to play against uh by leverkusen or in the carabao cup i have been losing at the first round of every every single what am I saying? The first round of every single Carabao Cup, I always lose. So I'm going to sim through this day with my first team, and I hope we won that match against Manchester United because we have only won one match out of the two we've played, and we, we beat Watford, so there's that. All right, so I'm having second thoughts about playing this match because we won the Champions League last season, so I really don't see any point in playing uh, the group stage of the Champions League this season because I, I mean, we really should just go through. And we didn't roll through, we actually draw against the Rakuza in the first match. I don't like that. If I played this match, we definitely would have won it, I think. So I'm just going to play the match against Chelsea. But before I do that, I'm just going to like sim past the match against Leicester and we lose it. What the hell is happening? And we're at home for God's sake. We're at home. We had an unbeaten run last season and here we are losing matches for fun. Like it's just it's just it's just I really do not expect it from this team. Especially the first team. So Hall is an 86, Greenwood's an 88, and Zaid is an 82. There, there really shouldn't be any problem in the attacking because these guys have been together for, I think, like three seasons now. So there, there really shouldn't be any lack of chemistry between those three guys in the front. So I'm really expecting a lot more from them in this coming match. One man, the focus of attention. Three goals in three games, and you can't argue with that. We're live on EA TV. Welcome everyone on a perfect night for football with the floodlights beaming down. My name is Derek Ray and sitting alongside me in the commentary position is the former Arsenal and West Ham midfield player Stuart Robson. And what we have coming up for you is live coverage of the Carabao Cup. It's the Blades taking on Chelsea. Well, Derek, players and fans love a cup competition. And although we're a long way away from the final, both teams will be looking to book their place in the next round in the hope of a good run in this tournament. Let's go playing up front today, Romelu Lukaku. Determined defending. Excellent first touch under the circumstances there. Goalkeeper doing his job, getting the touch. Conte. Excellent ball over the top. Lukaku! And it's in! 1 0. They breach the defense. Well, I have to say, this is a really good goal. He skips past his marker, and that gives him the space to get his shot away. Excellent stuff from him. He's given it away. Foden. And he's done it! Parity again! A magnificent game unfolding!
Well, I have to say, this is a really good goal. Just watch his technique here. He just hits through the back of the ball with such power. There's no stopping that. Now a decent position. Foden. How can they open up the defence here? Well, not on the target. The keeper seemed to have it covered. Well, he did defensive judgment to end the attack. Oh, great vision. Oh, tremendous goal! Technical excellence to finish that one off. Wonderful to have that in your repertoire. Well, let's look at this again. The one and two touch pass is absolutely outstanding to play around the pressure. And then just look at this finish, Derek. He does so well to read the bounce. Oh. Lukaku. He must finish. Goalkeeper getting in the way. Superb save. He did it, but it was worth an effort. A good strike from him. Now, what can they produce on the flank? Well, here it is again. The through ball is absolutely inch perfect, but there's still plenty to do from here. He hits it so well, though. Lots of pace, lots of power, and the keeper... Side. And clears his lines. Beautifully disguised ball. And a goal! Well, here it is again, and the pace in which they break forward is devastating. It's so hard to defend against, and then what a strike. That's it with such ferocity, certainly no stopping that. That's a great goal. Lukaku. And Chelsea have given us away. Well, there might well be scope for them to counter-attack here. Can he make it count? And there is the goal to make it a hat-trick! Excellent at finishing, there for all to see. Well, here it is again, and it's all about the pace in transition. They're so quick to get out from the back, and then the shot could not be hit any better. Struck with such a bookable offence. And I think he's got it absolutely right. That was a poor challenge, you have to say. Luka Jovic. There's the final whistle. The home fans are jubilant. They are going through. Well, the result was never in doubt, was it? They controlled the game from start to finish. I seriously do not understand why the referee won't just let us have that last attack to uh, just make it six. But, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We beating them 5 nils. That eight right there was a definitely the man of the match, hands down, because he did really, really well from his first goal to his last goal. Everything was amazing. All right, so that was the very first time that we are winning the first match in the Carabao Cup in, in three seasons. So... That was great, and it was a very, very huge win. 5 1 to Chelsea. Chelsea was the first team that we played when we switched to ultimate difficulty, and we are trashing them right now. So we have gone way, way over them if we're able to beat them 5 1 on the ultimate difficulty. So I don't think there's any match that I really want to play in this month of October. So I'm just going to switch them all the way to November. We already played, we already played in. Uh, we already played Chelsea, I really wouldn't want to play them again, but we might just like play this Champions League match against uh, against Lazio and let's see how we do really. Alright, so we win against Dynamo Kiev 1-0, then we defeat Aston Villa 3-2, what else? Crystal Palace, we win them 3-1, we win Lazio 2-0, 2-1 to Crystal, to or was that was that team? Uh, Newcastle, and we beat Leicester 5 4 on penalties. So we are through to the next round the, in the Carabao Cup, and then we beat Brentford 3 1. So we are here in the Champions League against Lazio. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of rotation. Basically, just Jovic and McKenny that are coming for Greenwood and Foden. And Foden is actually 92, so he's on par with Zaid, who is for some reason stuck on the 92 rating. Hopefully, that's not his peak because if it is, then I mean, it's not bad. But then we're just going to have a new best player in the team. 
I mean, he won't, Foden won't be the best player, but you know, he's just going to be the highest rated player in the team. Davies is also at a 90, Arahal and Upamikano are 88, and Bakari is still on an 86. So he's he's definitely not the best defender out there, but he's still doing a really good job. Got Champions League group stage action to bring you tonight. Stuart, what are you expecting? Well, they've been very good so far, Derek, and these fans have certainly seen some exciting football. Let's hope they get the job done today. And this Champions League group stage contest commences. And on the back of that particular challenge, will the referee let the matter rest there? So we have an early... Well, well. Bad challenge, and now it's up to the referee in terms of what to do next. Well, he's gone into the book. Well, he was late and he deserved a booking for that. And attempting the through ball. Must take the lead here. Oh, but he's missed it. How on earth but is in this? In this game, Stuart, what do you think we might see from him? Well, his recent form speaks for itself. Three goals in the last three games and he's playing with great confidence at the moment. Every chance he could add to that tally today. And keeping it out here. Really good interception. Must be just failing to hit the target. Good effort, though. Well, that's a well timed pass. Here you can see what a good goal this is. He hits it so cleanly and the keeper has no chance. That's a great strike. The ball. Oh, big chance. How well, far from the ideal pass, you've got to say. Real chance. And it goes! Just look how he holds off the defender. He keeps his balance and he still hits the target. What a good goal that is. And the Blades could threaten on the flank. Devoe. Can he put it away? Here it is again, and it's a superbly weighted through ball to break that defensive line. While the move in the box is equal to it, it's such good timing. What and it's goal. going with home advantage. Stuart, as always, very keen to get your take. Well, what a totally dominant performance. There could be consequences, given that the yellow card was handed out to him earlier. And it will be his last act of the day. He's off. Well, taking it. Can he take advantage? Oh, a goal! It's gone in! 
the goalkeeper doesn't want to see a playback of that ever again. Well, here's the replay, and as you can see, he doesn't read the danger at all, does he? It's a poor piece of goalkeeping. Right, 4-0. Bofana. Well, far from a smooth challenge. Now, will the referee produce a card? Well, he's gone into the book. Well, he was late, and he deserved a booking for that. Can he do it? Well, here it is again, and just look how he turns away from his marker and then gets his shot away. That's a very good goal, you have to say. And there goes the half-time whistle. Well, a bright and positive performance. Right, so I really do not know how Braga was able to get that goal, but this is where I'll be ending the match because I really, <laughs> I really cannot be beating a team 4-0 four, four in the first half for the ultimate difficulty. So, I... I because of time, I do not want to like take a, like the remaining 45 minutes of this match. I'm just going to skip. I'm just going to like jump to result because like I really doubt that there's any way they're going to be coming back. So I'm just going to do this and let's see what the final result will be. So when before when just like in the player career mode, only other world came on. I have no idea why, but I mean we are going to be through to the knockout stage of the Champions League if I'm not mistaken. All right, I'm going to skip past all these matches and let's see what match will be ready for us in the month of December. I think, I think the league match against Manchester City will be the best. So that is exactly what I am going to do. So I'm just going to sim all the way to there. Hopefully we get this win against Chelsea and we do 2-1. Then the next match is against Spurs and we get the win as well. Another 2-1 win. We also we lose against Bayer Leverkusen. Shit. And then I have no idea what that result was against that team. We draw with Leeds. We have to win against Brentford, there, obviously. Okay, that's Sheffield United. We actually win them 4-1, 2-1 to Dynamo Kiev. West Ham, we win them as well. Then Everton, we also win that match. And then we are here with the match against Manchester City. All right, so we are currently third on the table. I have zero idea why we are... Okay, we've lost three matches and we've drawn two. We are seven, a whole seven points ahead of Manchester United. That is that is bad. And then Liverpool is ahead of us as well. They they have one loss, so like none of the teams are unbeaten this season. Okay, so we just need to win as many matches as possible in order to get like gain on Manchester United. And uh, Starting with this match, really, we are in the Zilla FC Stadium. Sorry, in the Godzilla Arena. I have no idea why I called, called it that. But we're going to be using the main team. Foden is a bit low on stamina, so I'm just going to switch him out for uh, Kamazenga here. And then Upamikano too, but there's not really anyone I can put there that I'm going to be comfortable with if I like put there in case of Upamikano. So Bakari has finally got into an 80... 87 so that's good for him well what a game we have in store for you today the hosts have been scoring freely all season but they face the best defense in the league who will come out on top we'll have every kick of the ball for you live on ea tv Hello everyone and welcome. What we can't complain about today is the weather. Absolutely perfect playing conditions. I'm Derek Ray getting ready to bring you all the action accompanied by my broadcasting partner Stuart Robson. I'm looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League coming right up. It's the Blades facing Manchester City. Well thanks Derek. The best coach I played under would always tell us before kickoff, earn the right to play. If you can win your individual battles, outrun your opponent, eventually you'll get the space to show your ability. I'm sure that's being echoed by the coaches here today. And a look at the starting 11 for Blades.
This should be one to savour. Manchester City get the contest underway. Oh, could be. Missing the target by a tiny margin. Well, it's a difficult right. skill. Still passing it around with authority. Making sure it didn't get past him. Oh, did so well to deny him. Thanks to that piece of defending. Well, as you can see from the possession, there's been little between these two teams. It's been a really tight and cagey affair. You just hope it opens up a little and that what can't miss, surely. And a goal! Now they've broken through. 1-0 here. Well, here it is again, and it's all about the pace in transition. They're so quick to get out from the back, but there's still plenty to do from here. He hits it so well, though. A change on the offing for City. Running with the ball confidently. Well, this could pose problems for the defenders. Can they put it away? Able to clear the danger, at least for now. Well, that's a fantastic tackle. And it's Gabriel Jesus. Grealish. Takes it on. And a goal! They've increased their lead. And they don't want to be throwing it away from here. Well, as you can see, he hits this with so much power. But just look at the follow-through. So athletic. That's a dynamic strike. They've been a bit unlucky today. They certainly haven't been two goals worse than their opponents. But in key moments, they've just been found wanting, particularly defensively. Counter-attacking very much an option. Can they keep it going? Well, he needed to... Can he get one back? He can! And who's to say there's not enough time for them to level matters? It would be quite the story. Well, here's the replay, and as you can see, he doesn't read the danger at all, does he? It's a poor piece of goalkeeping. The Bruyne. Oh, racing past his man. And still danger here. But it looks so threatening, but the danger averted. Can they fashion something? They need a goal. What late excitement. And the match is level. Well, let's look at this again, Derek, because the transition when the ball changes hands is so quick. And then what a strike. That's it with such ferocity. Certainly no stopping that. That's a great goal. And the referee... So Manchester City couldn't just hold on to the end of the match. We were able to get two goals in the last 10 minutes and this was way better than the comeback that we had last season and i'm just really 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 happy that we we're able to get this draw because i mean we dropped two points in our home stadium that is actually a bad thing because i i really wasn't expecting us to do this bad in this match but i mean things happen sometimes players just act like you know they don't have sense and all that but we're able to at least get the draw when it when it mattered so all right so we're going to be simming past the Manchester City match in the Southampton match uh I think that we're going to play this one against Manchester United because they are first on the table and we would really want to take point of them we lose in the Carabao Cup against Manchester City and that is just bad we do win against Southampton but we're out of the um Carabao Cup we haven't actually like been in this competition like I actually need to win that trophy because that is the one trophy that has actually eluded me right now because we won everything else okay we haven't won super cup we won everything else except for that trophy so we're able to win all of the matches except from that one against manchester city and we're here in the match against manchester united and we're traveling to old trafford i doubt ronaldo is going to be here because he probably might have retired this is 20, 2025 and wow that is a lot of offers Gravenberg's transfer offer. I really do not want to sell Gravenberg, so you guys should really stop asking me for him. Okay, we got the manager of the war of the month award. And nothing else is really important. Alright, so we are third on the table still. Manchester 
Manchester United is still seven points ahead of us. And if we win, we're going to be four points behind them. And Liverpool might actually take top spot. So we just have to we just, we just have to win this match. All right, so we're going to be using our first team against Manchester United. And they have Don, Donny Malin. They have this year Rashford, Sancho, Fernandez, Locatelli. Varane is playing left back. That is very weird. They have Longley. They still have Shaw, and Shaw is playing on the right. What the hell is this formation do? <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to use my normal for my normal team. The no changes in the starting lineup. Greenwood is already on an 89. Suho has gone up to 87, and that that is really all of the changes, unless I'm missing something. But. All eyes on one man up against his former club. Will he make an impact live on EA TV? And here we are at one of the great venues for football anywhere in the world, Old Trafford in Manchester. My name is Derek Ray, and sitting alongside me, ready to provide all the analysis, is Stuart Robson. And very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. It's Manchester United against the Blades. Thanks, Derek. Well, both managers... And here's the lineup for Manchester United. David De Gea between the posts. Rafael Varane plays alongside Luke Shaw as fullbacks. And rather than use a strike partnership, they've gone with just the one player in attack. And the match is underway. Accurate pass upon accurate pass. Difficult to stop him. And the keeper got there. Here's Sancho. Well, that's the kind of play you want from your defender. Zaid. Chances on. Oh, terrific save. Well, you're absolutely right. That's a top class save. Just They'll repeat the trick. Corner again. Short corner it is. And he takes it on. In it goes! But wait a minute, that will not count. Well, that was tight. Could cross it in here. Still on level terms, moving the ball nicely. Bruno Fernandes. It is a decent looking attack here. And in! Well, here's the replay. Watch how he goes past his man with such ease, and it's just a change of to check for the linesman. Supermecano. Ryan Grafenberg. Greenwood. Oh, big chance! A goal! Real excitement! A back and forth type of game. Now they're level. Well, just look at this again. He moves the ball quickly, he gets beyond his marker, and he keeps his composure. It's an excellent finish. Back fairly quickly. Could go ahead. Oh, the referee points to the spot. Penalty. Well, no card handed out, but quite a few upset players out there, Stuart. Well, he's made a genuine attempt to play the ball, so penalty, yes. Yellow card, no. A goal! Accurate from the spot. Let's take another look. He deceives the goalkeeper really well here by getting to dive one way before placing it into the opposite side. A really good penalty. So the ball is rolling again. 2-1 the score. What's going to happen next? Oh, lovely bit of skill. And delivered towards the back post. Oh, that is a majestic goal. Volleyed home with precision and style. Superbly done. Well, here it is again. He goes past his marker so easily with just a drop of the shoulder. And the movement is good, making for a comfortable finish. It's a really great goal.
been a decent chance, but offside the decision. Here's a change for Manchester United. Not testing the keeper at all with that effort. Well, let's go to Alex Scott now because something has happened in the Liverpool game. Alex. Yeah, it's a third goal for Manchester City. They now lead 3-2 with under... Can he put them in front? He does! And with so little time left, that might be the winner. Wonderful drama. Well, here's the replay, and just look how quickly they break forward once they win the ball back. And he makes no mistake with the finish. He showed a lot of composure there. Could be a chance to break here. Well, these United fans can sense an equaliser here, but can the players respond? Chances on. A goal! Well, let's take another look, and I'm not sure what the keeper was thinking there. Just look at his position. He made it far too easy for him to score. Back underway, and quite the story being written in this one. 3 all. Locatelli. Bruno Fernandes has it. And that is that, the final score here, and it ends in a draw. All right, so I really cannot believe that we actually drew that match. That is so annoying. We just couldn't just fucking hold on, oh my God. <sighs> and of course, it's Ronaldo. I thought Ronaldo had already retired, but what the fuck is he still doing in 2025? Bro, fucking with... with oh, God. I'm so, I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. <sighs> okay. I think we're now six points behind Manchester United, so we're going to sim all the way to this Barcelona match. I think that's the first leg, so I'm, I'm most likely going to sim it and then play the second leg. We're through to the next round of the FA Cup. We beat Arsenal as well. And so what we're going to do against Leicester, we beat Leicester. Then the match against Manchester City, we beat Manchester City as well. So we are here in the match against Barcelona, and I'm just going to do a quick sim. And before I do that, I'm just going to... Okay, and uh, an offer for Edwards was made. Hudson Odoi offer withdrawn. Okay, I really don't care about all of these. Interest in Bellingham, I, well, I'm not buying Bellingham anytime soon. So, all of these are transfer offers that I really wouldn't have been interested in, in the first place. So, all right, so we are away from home and we are. I don't know if I should play this leg and then. And then same the second leg, but I. I really don't want to. I'm just going to sim it. I'm going to sim this one. It's safer. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I'm definitely not able to play the second leg because there is no way that they are going to come back. I mean, they did it against PSG, but I mean, I don't know. There's just no way that they're going to come back. Zaid scored, Bakari, Devo, and Greenwood. All right, so just one difference in the squad that I'm going for with this match. That is McKinney that's coming in for Foden again. And let's just hope we win this match. Alright, so Liverpool have gone up to first position. We are five points ahead of them, so we are so they are not really out of reach. You just need to defeat Manchester United and Liverpool. And just, I just hope they drop points because we are on four draws and three losses. <sighs> this is really tough. I really do not want to not win this league because I mean we won in the last in, in the last uh, in the last season, and although it's going to be a bit more realistic if we don't win i just want to get the chance to win this so that you know i can brag about winning the premier league back to back with zilla fc all right there's just going to be two changes in the squad zaid is playing striker in this match then hudson odo is coming in for greenwood and mckinney is coming in for folding our house already at an 89 rating and uh i don't know if devo was a 91 all along but he He's on 91. Our camera lens trained on one man in a rich vein of form and number one in the scoring charts. Can he do it again today, live on EA TV? Hello, everyone. The heavens opened earlier and the rain shows no inclination to stop. We're looking forward to the game anyway. My name is Derek Ray and joining me for commentary is Stuart Robson.
And very much looking forward to bringing you action from the Premier League. It's the Blades up against Tottenham Hotspur. Well, Derek, we can talk about coaches and their methods, but it's now down to the players. Which ones are going to stand out? Who will affect the game? And who will have the greater desire? If And a look at the starting 11 for Blades. This is the starting lineup for Tottenham Hotspur. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the wingers play today. Will they stay high and wide? Will they come in field and support the centre forward? And how deep will they come out of possession? They're going to be key to this formation. Eye of relief. That nearly proved costly. Well, he got away with that one, didn't he? It's a good recovery, though. And a long way out. Oh, really hit with venom. And off the woodwork. Really getting stuck in. And it starts with the ball over the top, perfectly weighted, and then through on goal, it just goes for power and smashes it past the keeper. Weston McKenney. Moving into the advanced position. Can they convert? Oh, and that is an audacious chip. Well, he might smile. The goalkeeper has no interest in smiling. Well, it takes a lot of skill to get that right, and he's certainly got that. It's a brilliant bit of technique. What a good goal. Look at that game. The atmosphere is always good inside that stadium, and two very good teams. Good-looking ball. There could be a chance now. Must be. And Manolas getting in the way. Well, as you can see, he hits this with so much power, but just look at the follow-through. So athletic. That's a dynamic strike. Firing is in. Oh, really close. Just over the top. Crossing opportunity. Ndombele. Well, there might well be scope for them to counter-attack here. There's a slide draw pass, and not cleared away properly. Able to clear the danger, at least for now. Great opportunity, a goal! How about that? He's put it away to make it a hat-trick. Well, here you can see it again. Good run, great strength, and a composed finish under pressure. That's a top-class goal. Brozovic. No foul. Spurs advantage. And there it is, the final whistle. Well, so that is the end of the match, and we have beaten Spurs 4-0. Side, obviously, the one with the hat-trick. No one else really can, can match the guys' piece. All right, thank you guys for watching. That was a very, very interesting match. If you did like this video, make sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you can get me to 1,000 subscribers. Please, this is the 500 subscriber special with one hour. I think the next one is going to be one hour long as well. I'm not sure. Or it's most likely going to be shorter. Yeah, it's most likely going to be shorter. So, anyway, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.